Is there a formula for Hollywood success as a screenwriter? I think that there is, and I think I can teach it to you in four easy steps. And I think you'll see why in a second. Hi, my name's Jeff Howard. You might know me from movies like Oculus and Ouija Origin of Evil, or TV series like Haunting of Hill House or Midnight Mass. We're here today to talk about my formula for success as a writer in Hollywood. And for me, it's always come down to four components, talent, perseverance, networking, and luck. And before we dive into each one of those individually, I just wanna say the truth is, at least in my experience for 25 years now, the truth is you need all four of those components working for you in order to succeed and make it a real career. So the first piece of our formula, talent. That's easy, right? You're either born to be a writer or you're not. Not exactly, and especially not for screenwriting. Is there a component that you need to be born with? A certain ability to be a storyteller? The ability to lay those words down on the page in a way that are gonna keep people turning that page? Absolutely. That's what you're born with. There's the rest of it is what you develop, especially as a screenwriter. Screenwriting is as creative and unlimited as it is, still a specific kind of writing with specific kind of structures. It's not to say that there's rules, but there are specific structures and modes that movies and TV shows have always fallen into. And the good news is they still really work. How do you develop that talent? The great news is there's a vast library out there, essentially almost free of movies and TV shows from the past, filled with thousands of lessons about how to handle character, how to handle plot, how to handle beginnings, middles, and endings. Every trick that you could possibly think of, somebody has dealt with at some point in the past. I'll never be one of those people who says, if you don't know Casablanca or you don't know Raiders of the Lost Ark, then you could never work in this movie industry as a writer or this TV industry as a writer. I don't believe that's true at all. I believe there's true originality out there too. All I'm saying is there's lessons and tips and tricks and techniques that are out there to be had from some of the real excellent previous writers who have gone before us. Take a look at them. I think you'll really enjoy them way more than you think you will now. My one caveat with all of these resources is, listen to everybody. Anybody might have that tip or that trick or that technique that really works for you. But what I would tell you is only keep those pieces of advice that really resonate with you. If you try to incorporate something that sounds great for someone else but doesn't really work for you, you're always gonna regret it and it's never gonna give you the full product that you know you deserve. That's talent. What's next on our list? Perseverance. And let's be honest, when we mean perseverance, what we're really talking about is money. How are you gonna make a living while you're waiting to become a full-time screenwriter? It's the number one question I've ever asked anywhere. And there's a couple of ways to go about this. The first one is, you gotta pick one path right now. You gotta decide whether you're gonna stay home, wherever it is that you live and are working now, or you gotta decide whether you're gonna to move to Los Angeles, pick up and go for it. In the past, it was always better to be in Los Angeles. Today, it's not hugely necessary right at the beginning. There's great advantages to being here. The social scene, the mingling around of constantly knowing you're surrounded by the industry, the energy of the town, all those things are great. But there's also disadvantages about coming here. For instance, you have to get a job to survive, right? And that job could either be inside the industry or outside the industry. If you choose an inside the industry job, you're gonna make those connections, right? You're gonna live in the world of all, all, of all of your dreams and you're gonna be around the action constantly. And that's true. But you're also gonna be working really long hours for really little money for a really long time. And what that's gonna cause you is lost time doing what you really came here to do. So you gotta balance that equation for yourself and ask which one's better. Because the other side of it is you stay home wherever it is that you are now. If you're comfortable there, if you feel at home and at ease and you have a good life going where you can support yourself while you pursue this through the now available means of Zooms and social media, then that's a big win and you should cash in on that and do that. But if it's burning in your soul to come to Los Angeles and you have to be a part of the scene to go make it, you'll find the time to do the work once you're here. Everybody who really wants to make it always finds the time to do what they came here to do. So in the end, it's really a personal choice. Do you choose comfort now to take a little bit longer to break in, but still get what you want to go? That's one way to go. Do you choose discomfort now, moving here, starting from the very bottom and trying to climb your way up the ladder? It's absolutely valid way to do it. I know a million people who have made it that way. It's just really a personal choice. So we've talked about talent. We've talked about perseverance. Let's talk about networking. It's a critical component. In a lot of ways, it's never been easier because of social media. 
in a lot of ways, it's never been harder because people have their walls up and everybody's been fragmented and there's a million lawyers and a million solutions and a million forms that you have to sign for anybody to ever check out anything. So it's a good time for networking and it's a bad time for networking. What are the main categories that we're talking about? First, the query. Old fashioned as it gets. An email written to a specific person very, very short. If they open that up and they see block paragraphs of information about you, they're going to tune out faster than you could imagine. Very short. Couple of sentences about you, couple of sentences about the project. And then the, the way I would wrap it up is to say, I'd love to pick your brain about blank and suit that blank to the individual person that you are sending that email to. Never, can you do this for me? Could you meet me and do this for me? Can you sell my script? Can you sign me? What you really wanna to talk to them first about is picking their brain, asking them for their expertise in some aspect of what you wanna do. It's a really good way to start the conversation. So we've talked about query, let's talk about contests. To me, I, I was never a big contest joiner, but from talking around to people who've had a lot of experience, this is what I've gleaned so far. If it's a contest where the, one of the judges is the vice president of TV for some major figure or some giant company, that one might be pretty worthwhile. If it's a contest where it's some, you know, uh, nowhere, nowhere, you know, conservatory of screenplays, no one will ever see this that matters, maybe that's not one that you go out for. I, I know that each one of those costs money and you've got to pick and choose your spots well. Pick one that's going to get you where you want to go. So that's query, contests. What's left? Social media. It's the era of social media. Everyone is there to be found. I'm gonna tell you something that you might not believe, but I think it's pretty true for the people that I've talked to. I ask friends in the industry about this all the time, and there's really nobody who doesn't privately admit that they start their day or end their day lying somewhere in bed, reading a little bit about the own work that they've done on social media. So if you ever wonder if people are out there reading the things that you're putting out there, they most likely are. How would I play social media today? First off, I would make sure that I was only ever me. I was as me as me could be, the most authentic voice of me that there is because there's no reason advertising some phony version of you out there ever. Uh, so stay very true to yourself. Second, I would use social media to follow and comment on the postings of people whose work I admired or who, people who I would like to help, you know, like who I thought could help me break through in this industry. But I would not just answer everything they do with a quick LOLs, or I would not just like everything 10 seconds after they do it. I would play the long game on this thing. Put yourself inside the movie The Sting and play the long game here for a minute. Follow the people that you admire or the people that you're trying to get to know or the people you think you could work with or align with, right? Over the long haul, wait for them to post something about something you know about, about something you really feel, about something you really have something to say about, and then comment on that. And you hit a few of those sort of inte intelligent, regular, human, conversational, non-business uh, back and forths with somebody. Anybody who is good hearted enough to want to help you in that situation will take that spark. And if you offer up something like, hey, I'd love to pick your brain about something or, you know, along those lines, they will respond sometimes, not all the time and maybe not even often. But the ones who are going to be helpful are going to respond to something like that. But it all starts with you being genuine and true to yourself and not sort of sycophantically just liking everything or LOLzing everything that comes along. Be true to yourself and stay to who you are. And you're going to go really much further in this business when it comes to networking. So networking, one more thing to say about it. Who are you looking to query? Who are you hoping to get the attention of in these contests and these hosting sites? Who are you following on social media? Well, it's usually agents and managers that writers are targeting, and that's fine. But if I queried or sought out 100 agents and 100 managers, I'd expect a 1% return on my investment at best. There's other categories of people out there, though, that you might want to think about when you're querying or when you're reaching out on social media. The first of those is entertainment lawyers. They're a really important part of the team that most people don't think about. But in the current incarnation of my career, it all began with, one, with my lawyer, who is still my lawyer, and helped me build every single representation team I've had over the last 12 or 13 years together. They're a very important piece. Who are their best friends? Agents, managers, producers, talent, directors, writers, you know, all the people that you want to get to know. How do you tell a good one? I'm not really geographically biased most often, but good entertainment lawyers are based in Los Angeles and they take 5% of your earnings. If there's somebody who isn't using that model, they are most likely not a bona fide entertainment lawyer. Who else is out there? 
baby producers. Baby producers are critical. I'm not sure I would call any of them baby producers to their faces because they make some of the best stuff that's out there. But what I'm talking about is people who don't have enough connection yet to go sell things alone to the studio, but who know how to team up with other producers or elements to get things more attractive to go sell to a studio. How do you find a baby producer? Well, if you're talking about TV, look at the credits of every TV show on the TV show that you like, right? Write down everybody who's listed as any kind of producer, executive producer, co-producer, you know, um, associate, all the producers that you can find. Write them all down. Then follow everybody who wrote an episode and cross them off the list. The people who remain are non-writing producers. Somewhere in there, if you Google them, there is most likely a baby producer who found this material and helped kip, you know, kick it up the food chain to everyone else. If you're talking about feature films, there's another way to find baby producers. You look at all the credits except for the produced by credit, the PGA possessory credit. You look at executive producer, associate producer, co-producer, whatever one that they've got to offer. Write those names down, Google them all, find out the ones that have a small production company and somewhere in there is your baby producer who found this material and got the whole ball rolling on that project. They're excellent at t taking things and making them happen within the industry. They're motivated because they don't yet have overall deals or big budgets or things to deal with. And they're looking for you because they also don't necessarily get the hottest, biggest scripts that are coming through the pike. They're, they're mostly getting things that they self-generate or bring writers onto. So baby producers are a really excellent outlet for you to be looking for out there in your networking game. We've talked about talent, we've talked about perseverance, we've talked about networking. Let's talk for just a second about luck. What do I mean when I say luck is a factor in making it as a screenwriter in Hollywood? I mean that luck is the residue of preparation, as my dad used to love to tell me. And what that basically means is, if you've done the work and you're prepared, when that so-called lucky break walks through the door, you'll be ready to capitalize on it. So be ready, be prepared, and you'll find that you can manufacture your own luck as you need it. Hey, so thanks for being here today and thanks for being part of the Jeff Howard Sessions community here on YouTube. I started these videos because after 25 years as a working screenwriter, I realized that it took me eight and a half years to sell my first script. And then after that, it took another eight and a half years to get the first one made. And I realized that in that intervening time, I'd made every mistake, taken every wrong path, made every you know professional, personal and business error that a human being was capable of making in this job. And I started these videos to try to help you save some time and avoid some of the pitfalls and the little dark alleys that I took myself. Thanks for being here. If you could like and subscribe and share these videos, we really appreciate it. We're really here to try to help build up the community of writers working their way toward their WGA future. Thanks and see you next time.